buffalo sauce. This is America's favorite hot wing sauce, and it's pretty good, but this is mine, the one I made at home. So upon doing my research, I actually came across a lot of people really only making the hot sauce after it was done. So upon my reach, I actually came across the Joshua Wiseman method. And I actually like this pretty good because he does it straight from the fermentation of the peppers. I pulled some ideas from his, but I still changed this one, right? But this is still my kind of original recipe with a little bit of ideas of his. So if you guys actually want to see his method, I'm going to link it in the description. And you guys could go ahead and watch it. But this is how you make hot sauce at home. But enough talking. Let's get started. You're going to start off by getting 15 to 16 red Fresno peppers, and we're gonna cut off the top. So go ahead and cut off the top from all your peppers. Once you have removed the top from your peppers, just go ahead and make a slice right through the middle, just like that. And this is totally optional. You could go ahead and keep the seeds if you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and use a spoon, and I'm just gonna take all that out. This is optional, but I just like to remove them because most of the flavor is really going to come from the pepper itself. So go ahead and do that to all your peppers. Now this is how your pepper should look after deseeding them. And now you're going to get four and a half cups of filtered water and go in there with three and a half tablespoons of finely grinded kosher salt. Now go ahead and mix that up until all the salt has dissolved. Once all your salt has dissolved from your water, you're gonna go ahead and grab a jar that's roughly half a gallon big. Now go ahead and just throw your peppers in there. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna fill that jar up with that salt water mixture we just made. So go ahead and fill that water up till all your peppers are covered in it. And I'm gonna use a small ramekin to make sure my peppers stay submerged under that water mixture, right? Now just go ahead and put your lid on. And we're actually gonna let this sit for roughly five to 12 days. What this is gonna allow us to do is actually ferment those peppers to get that strong flavor. So go ahead and ferment that for five to 12 days. So now it's been five days since we started fermenting our peppers. As you can see, the water has changed color. And for some of you, the water might turn a little bit white. That's totally fine. If it starts fuzzing up top and looking like fungus, you have messed up totally. But if it turns a color like this with a little like white cloud, that's totally fine. So right now my peppers are done, but we're gonna get started on actually preparing the other things. So what you're going to do now is you're gonna get half a cup of some canola oil, and you're gonna throw that into a pan or a pot. I'm using a small pot that way, when I actually put in my garlic that we're gonna toast here, it'll be a bit visible, and it wouldn't be just like sauteing instead of frying. So what you're going to do now is you're gonna turn this on to about low or medium heat until it gets hot. Once your oil is now hot, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go in there with five garlic cloves, and you're gonna throw them in there. And you're gonna watch these carefully because you don't want this garlic to actually start burning. So go ahead and give it that nice mix. And we're only going to be toasting this garlic. We don't want it black. We don't want it dark, dark brown. We want a slight brown color on them. So after a couple of minutes, you'll notice that your garlic has now browned up like this. What you're going to do now is you're gonna strain this out and separate the garlic from the oil. So now your garlic should have a nice golden brown color like that. Just go ahead and put that to the side. So now to a hot pan, you're gonna go in there with a slight bit of some olive oil and go in there with half a stick of some cut up celery and half a shredded carrot. Give that a quick mix to incorporate those flavors properly. Now season that with a slight bit of some kosher salt. You're gonna cook this for about three minutes or so just to let the flavors really come out. So now it's been a couple of minutes. These are done and we're just gonna remove this and put this in a little bowl. Meanwhile, we continue to prepare our sauce. So now go ahead and grab an empty bowl and put a strainer over it. What we're going to do now is we're gonna sift our peppers from our brine, but do not throw that brine because we will be using it later for our sauce. So now throw your peppers into a blender, the crunchy garlic we made, half a cup and two tablespoons of white vinegar, four tablespoons of the pepper brine, and lastly our carrot and celery we cooked off earlier. Now go ahead and blend that up. You can go ahead and now season it with a little bit of salt if you would like, but I like to do this after once I'm actually about to do my wings. Now what you're going to do is, remember that oil we used to toast those garlic? Go ahead and throw in there half of that oil. And now blend that up again. And now technically your sauce is done. Now this step is totally optional. You could keep it as is, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a bottle with a strainer 
and I'm going to strain my sauce in there. So I'm gonna try to do this as best of my ability because it might fall. Now once you're done pouring in your hot sauce to your container, go ahead and put the lid on. And there you have it. You have now made buffalo wing sauce at home. Tastes so much better and it's much more healthier because it doesn't carry preservatives like the ones in the store. Right here I got some wings that I've been brining for about two days. All I did was basically make a salt and water mixture. I threw in there some freshly grated garlic and some black peppercorns and I let that sit. Meanwhile, our sauce from the peppers was fermenting. So now I'm gonna go ahead and fry these up. So here I have my chicken wings. I have cooked them to my desired crunchiness. I know a lot of you guys like to fry these until they're like concrete hard for the crispiness, but I don't like that because it actually overcooks the chicken. So here are my wings, as you can tell right here. It's not as dark as how you guys will like them, but to each one's personal preference, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually throw in there my sauce. So go ahead and throw in there a good amount of that hot sauce and just give it that nice toss to coat all of your wings. And there you go. There's your wing, nicely coated. Now let's go in there for that bite. And I'm gonna go ahead and go in there for another bite because that's how good they were. I'm more of a drum guy. I know a lot of you guys like the flat ones. Let me know in the comment section which one you guys prefer. I prefer these. And there you go. You have now made buffalo sauce at home, which is 20 times better than the store-bought one. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.